everybody. Welcome to the webinar on using AI for competitive analysis. I'll give you a little overview of Praxi and what we do. I'll try not to be too salesy. We're all kind of learning the AI journey together. Um, and then I'll walk you through our AI for competitive analysis. It's some cool new technology we put together and I think you'll enjoy it. So um, getting started here. There we go. So Praxi, uh, we came out, most of the team came out of SAP and, and some other companies and I've been doing manufacturing software for a long time. We found that in most environments, you kind of have three different layers or so you have your ERP layer, you might have your execution layer, your MES or other execution systems. And then there are what I would call the process improvement layer, which is all this ad hoc stuff, um, all your Lean Six Sigma um, uh, audits, everything your Gemba walks, all that stuff you're doing to try to improve processes is generally done in paper or Excel. And we saw just C's of this. And, and you know, these sort of whiteboard environments is anybody who's uh, running a manufacturing environment will probably be uh, uh, quite familiar with this. So um, what we did is we built a platform that allows us to digitize all that information, take it from the chaos you see at the top to beautifully uh, designed software packages. And we do everything from KPIs and visions to huddle boards to production monitoring, to uh, process improvement, all the kinds of things I was just discussing, uh, to people training and project management around all of that. So it complements your existing um, investments in production management systems and, and basically helps you digitize the last mile, if you will, of all of the paper and Excel sheet uh, information you have and lets you uh, make that digital. And then once it's digital, you can use AI on it. And we'll talk about that. Um, we have AI powered processes in our optimization layer uh, from lean apps, production apps, quality, supply, innovation, and strategy. And you can see here at the bottom, we do custom applications as well. And everything, as I said, can sit on top of those ERP or data layers or execution layers that come below. Um, there's lots of great value propositions on, on the kind of applications we build. So if you're interested, obviously you can, you can contact us and we'd love to walk you through it. This is uh, now getting to AI. Um, there's a paper, and we'll send this out, and there's a hyperlink here you can see uh, to uh, be able to get to this paper by Sequoia that just came out that talked about uh, what the hyperscalers, the, the people who are building out the infrastructure for AI, um, OpenAI, Anthropic, and the like, um, that the sort of uh, zero part of the AI build-out has already sort of you know, well underway. That The thesis of the paper was that now it's around the user interface and the application layer that will really be the game changer for businesses as they try to capture the value of what AI can do for them. And, and what Praxi really provides is an, a layer that does that. We have, we have three main components of that, our data ingestion capability, which we can do structured data or non-structured data, meaning documents or SQL databases or non-structured text. Um, we normalize that into this grid view you can kind of see here. And then inside we have an AI orchestration agent that uh, is quite good at building out uh, sequence processes um, like competitive analysis and others. And it orchestrates all the components in there to make that process effective and non-hallucinating and, and valuable. And then we add the application layer at the top where we build those out into applications. Um, this is, we feel like our capability is unique. Um, and if you're trying to do uh, whether those are analytical applications or uh, research applications, et cetera, uh, we think we can help you inside and outside of manufacturing. So uh, let's talk about competitive analysis. Uh, everybody here in business is doing those. You're trying to uh, identify and evaluating business competitors. And often that goes across a, a, lot, a wide array of vectors, their strengths, their weaknesses, strategies, their positioning, sales, pricing, customers, partnerships, um, you know, there's a lot of different vectors that you can add to this. So I'm going to show you what we built, but we can add additional vectors uh, uh, or areas that you're trying to understand across your competitive landscape very, very rapidly. And I would also say that, you know, this is a component part of a broader strategic and strategy and innovation building process that happens in most companies. And we have solutions for that as well. But the benefits of AI uh, in competitive analysis, you know, it, the speed now, uh, you know, it'll if if you run our, our process, it'll take a minute or two to run. Um, I'm not going to show you it running in real time. You will happy to give you a demo if you want. Um, but for the efficiency of not, you know, sitting on the phone and sitting or watching it run for a minute. Um, but in one minute, it'll pull together data that would, you know, take hours um, to put together. 
Um, continuous and monitoring and real-time insights. One of the things, um, there was a study done on um, ERs and um, uh, the monitoring from the nurses station was covered by AI and, to support the nurses and deaths in the ICU, I guess, um, dropped by about 20% uh, over six months. So the constant monitoring of these things so that you have real up-to-date information can be hugely valuable, not obviously in, in a medical sense, but also in understanding what your competitors are doing in real time. Uh, identifying hidden opportunities and threats. Uh, one of the cool things about AI is its ability to take the best knowledge from the internet and suggest options or identify issues. We're doing solutions where we're looking at massive quality data sets. It finds the issue, it identifies the problem, it identifies best practices that you can use to address the problem, and then it um, can even simulate the cost value of doing those things. So um, my experience is as you ask AI questions, it comes back with answers that you hadn't expected. And so you identify interesting hidden opportunities and threats. Um, obviously, it'll help your team improve their decision making. And because it doesn't have human bias in its analysis that it's pulling in, um, it gives you a check on that sort of uh, human or company biases where you think, you know, that you might have something covered that you really don't. Um, so let's, I'll walk you through a quick demo here of the application. It's fairly uh, simple. These are a couple of screenshots and you'll get these in, um, in the deck after. So let me jump out of here and we'll jump into the application. So it's a fairly simple application you create to create a new competitive uh, application anal or new competitive analysis. You just click on this button here. It runs a workflow to create uh, a new template. You see there's a bunch here, which I'll come back to to show you. And all you have to do is uh, put the company name. So you might say Walmart, uh, and then the company URL is uh, http colon forward slash forward slash www.walmart.com. And then the industry, let's say retail. Uh, okay, and then you click generate the list. I'm not gonna do that because as I said, it'll take about um, 45 seconds to do the work. Um, but what will happen, I'll jump to one of the ones that we, you know, pre-baked like a cooking show. Uh, so if you, I'll go to Rivian here, the first one. Um, so Rivian is a electric car maker, put it in, they generated the list and you can see the list of competitors that gets generated. General Motors, the location and the revenue of the company, Ford, Volkswagen, Hyundai, and Tesla. And then one of the cool things here is you can select from those competitors which ones you want, and it will pull up you know, more. And you can select the different competitors that you actually want to go deeper into. And, and this UI can be expanded to do more of this kind of stuff. And then this is really cool, too, is you can, you can decide on what of those vectors you're interested in. And we can add more for different companies and a customization thing. But you, know, you can select, in this case, they've done the business model of the company, the market share, the strengths, and the target customer. You then click this to generate the, the outcome. And then the AI goes out, it does the thinking, it summarizes the information for you. So in the case of Rivian, um, direct to customer sales model is the business model. Uh, it's a fairly new and small company that's establishing itself on market share, strengths, strong brand reputation, innovation, sustainability, and environment uh, or target customer, environmentally conscious, adventurous families, et cetera, um, because they make a lot of SUVs. And then you can see Tesla slightly different direct to customer sales model. Um, it shows the market share numbers because they're uh, in publicly accessible documents, um, strong reputation, customer loyalty brand, affluent, because this is a premium brand, um, et cetera. And then, so I'll just go back to some of the other ones. So it did that in the automotive space. Uh, NVIDIA, you can see here that this is uh, the semiconductor space um, and, uh, you know, it pulled together Taiwan Semiconductor, AMD, Broadcom, Intel, et cetera. And then you can see there's different vectors chosen here, number of employees, 20,000 plus, mission, strengths, weaknesses. Um, and so, you know, you can get different information uh, across a broad area of different types of companies. So I'll jump in here and show you a couple other ones. I thought this was interesting, OpenAI. Um, to understand the comp competition for the AI large language models. You have Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Meta, and Cohere. What's interesting to me about this is that these different companies have very different places in the AI ecosystem. Some are our core, like OpenAI, our core, um, uh, you can see here the pricing, et cetera, and uh, some are core um, large language models and some are not. Like Microsoft is not a core 
they're they're licensing and they're doing deals with both Anthropic and OpenAI on licensing. But you can see it gives you quite a bit of detail and information about the companies. And these are from completely different areas, you know, uh, Rivian, NVIDIA, OpenAI. Um, and uh, let's look at Apple last and then we'll um, uh, go back. So in Apple's case, the competitors, Samsung, Huawei, uh, Xiaomi, uh, Oppo, and Vivo. And you can see that uh, the differences here in the business model to our customer market share and pricing. And you can see it actually did a very good job of breaking down the pricing because it was available. Um, so uh, this is the kind of information, this is a fairly simplistic version of that application, but it's also, I would say, to think about this as part of an overall strategic and innovation um, layer process. So in the case of Praxi, we have a, a, strat, a strategic plan builder where you can scan the environment, get trends, and you can use these tools for those information. You can then access, uh, assess your own capabilities. And there are tools in here to do that. What are our core competencies? You know, What are we good? What's our technology priorities, et cetera? Then you can identify uh, opportunities using traditional SWOT analysis and others. And then uh, it will enter, actually generate a, a strategy and a roadmap and um, you can actually see your strategic plan if you fill this all out. So the information around innovation or around competitive analysis is just one of the core components that AI can support across this entire strategic planning process. And we have tools and solutions for each of those. So let me jump back into the deck. The other thing I would just going to the ROI aspects. Um, there's incredible ROI. I, you know, I've uh, I've been through a number of technological. Um, changes. I ran IoT at SAP, so I understand the hype cycle. But I would say my uh, experience with AI is different. It's not like, oh, there's a big hype, but it takes a bunch of time and it's really hard to implement and all that kind of stuff. What we're doing is we're delivering solutions very rapidly within weeks that can add immense value in all kinds of different areas. So I would encourage you to, to uh, take advantage of those things, um, whether you use Praxi or not, really go after using AI, because I believe uh, wholeheartedly that it's uh, a real um, capability that um, will be game changing for a, quite a long time. The last thing I would say is that um, these process optimization can be layered on top of your environment, no matter which uh, uh, companies you have at those bottom two layers, whether the ERP and your execution layer, we can do that digital transformation across those. And if you're interested, we have a free uh, intelligent operations pilot that's using AI across these uh, optimization layers. Uh, we define the goals, ingest the data, refine the analytics, and then we'll show you ROI, um, regardless of what your issues are, whether those are in um, manufacturing analysis, risk analysis, quality, pricing, et cetera. We're doing this kind of work across a lot of things. So please let us know if you're interested. Um, are there any questions before uh, we go ahead and, and sign off? I kept it to 15 minutes as planned. Um, if you have any, drop them in the chat, and I'll try to answer them real quick before we close out. There's a couple questions in the chat. Uh, you want to read them? I'm not seeing them. Sure. Uh, how is this different than using ChatGPT? Well, so it's a good question. So, um, in uh, if you ChatGPT and the, and you know Anthropic, these are they are the core large language models that you provide. So if you ask a question, um, you will get some data from ChatGPT. But what we're doing in this case and others that are much more complicated is you take those into a process like analyzing manufacturing or quality data. You have to go through multiple segments and processes just as a human would do to do the work and get accurate, accurate steps. One of the reasons that I, I said I didn't want to click the button because it would take about 45 seconds is that our model, our agent is actually doing reasoning across a number of steps to get rid of hallucinations, to give you accurate data to make sure that um, the outcome of that process is accurate and gives you the information you need. So some very simple processes you can do in, in ChatGPT and, and, and other processes, and you might not get hallucinations. The, the more steps in a process uh, that you have, the more likely you are to get those hallucinations and actually what they call grounding, not have a grounded solution in the answers you get. But for some simple ones, I mean, it's why we're all using those no tools. They're quite good at that, but that's the difference. Okay, one more. Um, how customizable are these AI tools to focus on niche market or industry? So we develop, we're, the, the simple answer is that everything in our system it is a, a, it's a development environment. So our software tools, and, and we have dozens of them, as you saw, we're all developed in our, in our development environment. 
we work with you and develop this to exactly your specifications, and we can train you to do development in it as well. It's a very simple environment to build things, but basically the entire application, the phases, the focus there, it's all completely designable to exactly your requirements. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, here's one more. Um, any specific AI technologies for far fabric manufacturing and or apparel manufacturing? Yeah, so um, it's a really good question. I are over the last couple of years, you've had a lot of micro kind of AI companies who come out to try to specialize. The be best example is there's some companies that are specializing in legal uh, AI, AI to help legal firms and things like that. Uh, you, you, what we've noticed over the last couple of years is that those specialized AIs are actually losing out to the large language models, the generalized AIs. And the point being is that the generalized AIs are the amount of investment going into them is, you know, literally billions and billions of dollars to improve them. And so they're actually outpacing the verticalized AIs. So I would recommend against uh, any verticalized AI, except if the where where there's a corner case. I used to run IoT, and where there's a corner case is where you need to have some intelligence on an edge device that can't use a large language model. But in the case of analysis and processes, our findings are that uh, that large language models are the way to go. Um, that the actual information you're going to get back and continue to they're going to continue to improve faster is much better than specialized AIs trained for a particular issue because the team doing that training are you know going to be much smaller, much less funded, and the generalized AIs are better. It, the, the trick is to, as I mentioned, what we're doing is with our agentic logic is to each, each step in the process to use the generalized AI to get the information specific to that issue and then take it to the next step and take it to the next step so that the entire process gives you exactly the information you want. But um, th that's our opinion uh, as of now, and, and it looks like it's accelerating in that direction. Is this finance friendly and friendly with labors, with labor? So finance friendly, yeah, we're doing very interesting things where we, we're doing analysis on pricing, optimization, on um, uh, demand planning, uh, scheduling. It, it does numbers very, very well. This is another area where we've built a lot of tools and capabilities that augment the large language models to do this work very well. So uh, from a labor standpoint, um, so from uh, we we do analysis of labor from the standpoint of uh, optimizing number of people needed required resource allocation for different scheduling and things like that. If the question was around, is it easily usable? Um, we build these user interfaces that and you even saw there. It's quite simple. We try to make each of the solution areas uh, quite simple and easy to use for uh, people. They can use them on the shop floor or out wherever they're working in warehouses on tablets. So it's quite user friendly. Okay, one more. Um, how do you ensure the data used is secure and private? That's a really good point. I should have mentioned that. So um, we have contractual obligations with our partners that they will not use our, the data we send for analysis for training. Um, so it's contractually obligated by our providers. And you don't get that if you use ChatGPT. You put anything in there and it is gonna get used to train. That's true of any of the models. So, um, we provide that, that it's probably the most secure way you can use AI. Okay. Is that all the questions? I think it is. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys for joining. Um, we'll, we'll make the presentation available and the video will be up on our site as well as YouTube, I believe, but thank you all for joining. And we'll talk to you next time.